So my name is Steve Landau. I'm the Director of Marketing Communications here at Philips LumaLeds in San Jose. This is one of our primary manufacturing facilities. We do all of our epitaxy here, which is the heart of an LED. This is where the chip really comes into to being. Um, we've got uh, a little over 500 people here at this site, uh, and then people in, in Singapore and Penang as well at our other two sites. And we really focus as a, a company uh, strictly on the manufacture of the LEDs. We want to design and produce the LEDs that give you the efficacy, the quality of light, and the reliability that's really required for lighting applications as, as we move forward. And, and the expectation is that LED lighting applications will significantly dominate the lighting world uh, by 2020. Philips LumaLeds, as, as we announced in, in December of last year, uh, has started our move and, and we are the first in production on six inch wafers. They're technically they're 150 millimeters. Uh, the industry uses the terms somewhat inter interchangeably between six inch and 150 millimeter. And we're coming from a platform that is a three inch platform today. And this is a particularly important move uh, for us and the industry as a whole. We expect others will follow our lead. And, and the reason is that the volume you get in terms of LEDs from a wafer is it's four times the volume. Um, so it, it really expands our capacity significantly without having to add lots and lots of reactors. So typically we define a power LED as one which is driven at 350 milliamps or above. Uh, in the case of our Luxion products, that can go up to about an amp and a half today for those products. Uh, our mid-power LEDs are typically driven in the 75 milliamp to uh, maybe 150, maybe as much as 200 milliamps. And these products are typically used in the automotive industry for signaling applications. You've seen them in rear combination lamps, turn signals, side view mirrors, etc. And then you have the low power LEDs, which are typically driven at 10 to 20 milliamps. So these LEDs might be used, uh, you might see arrays of them in a flashlight head or as a blinker on a bicycle, right? These kinds of applications. If you have a, a coffee maker, at home or a toaster that has an LED light in it, it's probably an, a low power LED. Right? Good at indication, but not really good for illumination. But if you think about the form factor, for instance, of a retrofit light bulb, a typical A19 or an MR16, you simply don't have the real estate to put lots of LEDs. So you need more light per square millimeter, and you need the efficacy, and you need the longevity to make the whole value proposition work. So that kind of mandates the, the power LED. What I've got here is a, a 60 scale model of a Luxion Rebel LED. Um, and I'll take this apart. This represents a white uh, LED. We start with a uh, ceramic platform. Uh, you've got on the, the back side a thermal pad as well as the anode and cathode for the, the LED. And then all the circuits are on top that connect to the chip itself. So this is the what we call a pump blue or royal blue chip. And all white LEDs start as a pump blue LED. Um, I don't know if your camera will pick up the, the color differentiation. It probably saturates it too much. Um, but this is the basic construct of a Luxion Rebel. One of the things that's distinctly different about this product uh, from most other uh, power LED products is that we use a process called thin film flip chip. So with thin film flip chip we get this perfectly flat surface on top of the LED. That allows us to take lumeramic phosphor plate which is a, a phosphor embedded ceramic plate and we can apply that to the chip on top without any obstruction and we get the phosphor conversion that way. Right. Um, so this gives us a very uniform, very consistent, very powerful way of applying phosphor. Many people are familiar with what is sometimes called goop in a cup, which is really where the industry started, where you filled this cavity essentially with, with phosphor and then put it on and hoped that it came out as consistently as, as it could. But it wasn't uncommon to see rings or to see color spots 
a bluish or purple light mixed in with the, the white light. Uh, from that goop in a cup, uh, ourselves and a number of other companies went to conformal phosphor coating, which was the application over the whole area, essentially, of a uniform phosphor coating. Um, but the, the lumeramic phosphor is really a, a step ahead because it allows us to characterize the wavelength of the LED. You're probably familiar with the concept of, of binning, which is a way to divide up the whole distribution of, of LEDs that are made by forward voltage, by color, by light output. And in particular with color, the, the correlated color temperature and the tint, it's been a particularly problematic area for the industry. As you look forward and you think about the volume that's going to be required in the industry and issues of supportability and supply chain certainty, you really want to have control over that manufacturing aspect. There are still some, some stretch goals out there. Uh, certainly everybody wants efficacy to get better and cost per lumen to go down, uh, and those things are happening. And then from an application perspective, we're not quite ready to replace the uh, stadium lights at a, at a football stadium, right? I think that will come someday, but that's, that's not where we're at today. And Philips is clearly focused on the concept of enhancing lives with light. I mean, what can we do better? What can we do differently to make the result of lighting improve people's environment and lives. The energy savings is so significant here that uh, it, it easily uh, proves to be a better, more sustainable solution.